Hello chess lovers, let's have a look at a very short game played by Alan Werle and Jay Westlund. The game was played in 1947 in Stockholm. White started with d4, d5 by black, knight c3, e6 and after e4 we see French defense. d takes e4, knight takes e4, this is the Rubinstein variation. Knight f6, knight takes f6 check, queen takes f6. Knight f3, h6, preventing any possible bishop g5 move. h4, an interesting move. c5, d takes c5, and here comes a bad move by black. Bishop takes c5. Now, can you find the winning move for white? Ready? White played bishop g5. Now, if you move your queen, for example, if you capture on b2, then there is this queen d8 checkmate. That's why after bishop g5, black captured on g5, but it turns out that after h takes g5, both this queen on f6 and also the rook on h8 are hanging. Black played bishop b4 check, a very cunning move. Now if c3 then black can capture on c3, and if king e2 then rook takes h1, g takes f6, bishop takes f6, and believe it or not, but this is an equal position. Black has a rook, a pawn, and a bishop against the queen, and because of the fact that this queen on e2 is misplaced, this is an equal position. That's why after bishop b4 check, white played king e2, Queen takes f3 check, a desperate move by black, king takes f3, rook takes h1, but here comes bishop b5 check and black resigned. Well, if bishop d7, then bishop takes d7, followed by queen takes h1 and white is winning. Believe it or not, but this same trap occurred in another game played in 1995 by Ciro Fernandez and Jose Javier Rubio. Though after bishop b5 check black didn't resign, instead black made a few more moves, queen takes h1, castled queen side, rook d1, bishop e7, king e2, bishop takes g5, queen h5, f6, queen f7 and only now black resigned. We can see that how important it is to learn these traps, because as you know, history repeats itself. Your comments and questions please, and thanks for watching. Good luck.